This is a price chart using standard candlesticks. And this is the same chart using Hakanashi candles. So what's the difference? Hakanashi translates to average bar. And that's essentially what it does. By averaging out the prices, it creates candles that are less reactive to noise and show the trend much clearer. I'm going to take the strategy described in this video and explain how to quickly test it in Python. I'll code everything from scratch and evaluate whether the trade signals from this strategy are any better than just picking random entries. Before we go over the strategy rules, remember that this isn't trading advice, it's just the results of my own testing. Heikenashi is not an indicator, it's actually one of the ways of displaying price data. So much like you can choose candlesticks or bars, Heikenashi is just another way of showing that same information. This strategy has only three requirements. First, there needs to be a downtrend, and in the back test, I'm categorizing that as five consecutive red bars. Then there needs to be a doji candle. This is a candle where the body is small relative to the overall range, and it's more or less in the middle. This candle often indicates indecision in the market. Finally, the doji needs to be followed by two bullish candles that don't have a lower wick. This indicates strength and a potential reversal. The trade is then opened at the next candle. At this point, the stop loss and take profit aren't important. I first want to test these signals and see if they are any better than random entries. I'm going to test this out using Python. I'm starting off with a blank Jupyter notebook. I'll create a first code cell where I just import my starting libraries. This includes pandas and numpy, which are both used for data science and working with price data, and then pyplot, which I will use to display various plots as I go along. Then I need to load in my price data. I've got various data sets that I've saved inside of my data folder. The one I'm testing is based on the S&P 500 index, but it uses OANDA's CFD price. So it's SPX 500, and I will be using one hour candles for this test. I will output the contents of that data frame, and this is what I've got. So my data is going back to 2015 up to 2025. So we've got 10 years worth of hourly candles here. A couple of things I need to do. First of all, I need to parse all of these as actual date time objects so that I can work with them properly. And I will set date time as my index to get rid of all of these numbers on the left hand side. And I do that by just expanding this section of code here. So now I parse the dates inside the date time column and I also set the date time column as my index. If I rerun this now, that shows it correctly updated. Then I'm going to calculate the Heikenashi candles themselves. And to do that, I'm going to use this formula here. I start with the close price, which is just the average of the open high, low and close prices. Next, I need to work out the open prices. This will require me to loop through the data, but because I have almost 60,000 rows, it's going to take quite a while. This is where NumPy comes in really handy because it is much faster at these kinds of operations. I will begin by creating an array that is full of zeros. This is a placeholder for all of my open prices. I then need a first value to begin with. So I will take the starting open price from my data frame, which is in this row, and I will set this at the first value of this new array. Then I can start looping through my data. So I do this inside of a for loop, and this is the code that I put inside that loop. For each of the Heikenashi open values, I need to take the sum of the previous open value and the previous close value and divide them by two. And then finally, after calculating those, I can stick them back inside of the data frame. The high and low Heikenashis are much easier to calculate. They are just based on maximum and minimum values. Once all of that is done, I just need to make sure that all of my columns of this data frame are in the correct order. So I re-index with them in the order that I want. Now I'm going to output the data frame again to make sure that the candles have been calculated. And down here, I can see my open high, low and close prices. And next to them, I have the Heikenashi open high, low and closes. Now I can begin calculating the inputs for this trading strategy. And I'll start with the doji candles. To be able to identify doji candles, there are a few things that I need to know about them. A doji candle typically has a small body which means that I need to know the open and the close prices. Additionally, the body has to be small relative to the overall size. So I need to know the range, the high minus the low. And lastly, the body needs to be roughly in the middle of the overall range. So I need to calculate all of those values for each of my candles. Here, I work out the range by subtracting the low from the high. I then work out the size of the body by taking the open minus the close price. And lastly, I work out the middle of the candle which is just the high and low added together and then divided by two. 
Now I can use this information to identify all of the doji candles in my price data. Firstly, I'm checking that the body is less than 10% of the overall range. I do this by multiplying the range by 0.1. And you can tweak this number to adjust how strict that criteria is. I then confirm that the body is near the middle. I do that by subtracting the open price from the middle of the candle and then making sure that it's less than 20% of the candle's range. And this is another factor that can be modified to adjust the selection criteria for the dojis. Once that's done, I can then output all of the doji candles and see how many I have. So this gives me 6,222 doji candles over those 10 years of data. Now I want to check for the bullish candles. These are two bullish candles in a row that don't have any wicks underneath. And I store that inside of this variable. Detecting a bullish candle by itself is not too difficult. The close price needs to be above the open. And secondly, the low needs to be equal to the open. So this makes sure that there is no lower wick. I then need to check that I have two of those in a row. So I do that first of all by checking how many I have in a row and then checking if that number is equal to two. Now I can filter my data frame to show only candles that have got a bullish streak. And that gives me 9,623 rows. Now I have my doji candles and I have the two bullish candles after them. The last thing is to identify the bearish downtrend beforehand. My requirement for that is that I have five bearish candles in a row. The code for this is very similar to what I just did for bullish candles. So I'm going to paste all of that in down here, except this time I'm looking for the close to be below the open. This will now give me the same information, but for my bearish trend and I have 7,631 rows where that happens. Finally, I can pull all of this together and generate my trade signals. For a trade signal, I need the following condition. Firstly, I need to have two bullish candles that don't have a lower wick. That's what this bullish streak confirms. Then before those two candles, I need to have a doji. So that's what this second section is. And notice that it's shifted by the number of bullish candles, which is two. And then before the doji, I need to have a bearish trend. So this is shifted by the number of bullish candles plus an additional one for the doji. This will give me a signal when the bullish streak closes, but the trade is actually opened on the next candle. So my trades are then taken from the signal column, which is shifted by one. And to avoid any errors, I add this line which checks for NA values and replaces them with false values. Lastly, I know that there can't be a trade on the very first row since I don't have enough information at that point. So I'm going to set that value of the trade to false. Now I can finally output all of my trades. And once this runs, I can now see that I get 121 rows where all of the conditions are met. So the next thing is to actually simulate these signals and see what happens. So I create this list of candles that will tell me once a trade signal is generated, what will happen in the next candle or the next two, the next three candles and so on. So what I do using this list is I calculate my returns. After that, I can display my data frame, which will show me all of those returns here. In this example here, return one is zero. And if I look at this row, the close price is the same as the open price. So that makes sense. There is no return. But return two takes the close price of the next candle. So it's 2065.2 divided by 2058 minus one. That's what gives me this return value here. So far, I've been doing a lot of data preparation, but now I want to actually start outputting some of this. The first thing I need to do is create a list of these column names, because this is what I'm going to be interested in when looking at these strategies. So I do that by simply creating a return columns list. If I output this list, you'll see that it just gives me those column names. Next, I want to filter those returns only for the rows that actually have a trade signal in them. So this will give me my system results. If I output this data frame, it will give me 121 rows, which is the number of trade signals that I got. And for each of those trades, it gives me the various returns. So that gives me information for the system. Now using this information, I can calculate the profits and the losses for each of those trades. The profits are just when the results are greater than zero and the losses are when they're less than zero. And using that, I can calculate my profit factors. So I will run this column without any outputs. And next I can plot this data out to better visualize it. This is the code that I'll use to plot. Most of it is not relevant to the backtest itself. The important line is this bit, which is where I plot out the system's profit factor. So if I run this code, I now get this table down here. On the x-axis is the profit factor. So a factor of one means that it's a break-even strategy. Anything above that is profitable. Along the bottom is the number of candles that the system held for after each trade signal. And it does look like there's a cluster here where the system actually performs pretty well. But this needs additional context. I need to compare this to just random entries. So in addition to my system results, 
I'm going to take all of the other rows, which is just all the rows that don't have a trade in them. And I will use those rows to calculate my benchmark profit and loss. So if I just took every other day, what is the average return on those days where I don't have a trade signal? Once I have the profit and losses for that, I can calculate the profit factor in the same way. I'll rerun this cell again. And if I go back into my code for plotting this data, I will add an extra line which plots out the benchmark profit factor. So we run this again, and now the benchmark is shown in green. And generally for most of the days, it sits just above one, which makes sense because the S&P 500 has a bit of a tailwind, it generally trends up the way. But this cluster here that I looked at earlier actually shows that the system performs better than just random entries, which means that it may have a statistical edge. This edge falls away for longer trade durations, which makes sense. What's also interesting is that the first candle after the signal is generated actually performs quite poorly and on average loses more than it wins. So based on this, I'm going to update the strategy entry conditions. If I go back up into this section of code that creates my entry signals, I'm going to add an offset and this offset is going to be set to one. So I will no longer take the trade on the candle immediately after the signal. I will actually skip that one and take the trade on the candle that comes after. The way I do that is by modifying this signal column to shift all of these by the offset. So notice now that everything is shifted by an additional value of one. If I rerun all of my code a second time and I go down to these plots, now you can see the results have significantly improved. By skipping out that first candle and trading on the next one, I now have an immediate profit. So now let's actually simulate this trading strategy. I'm still not introducing stop loss and take profit. All I'm going to do is enter the trade on these new offset signals and then hold it for five candles. So I will create a new cell down here and I will paste my backtesting code. There's quite a lot here, so I'm not going to explain all of it, but the key things are I have defined the starting balance. I've specified my hold duration of five candles, and then I've put in a position size of 50. This is just an arbitrary number for the sake of this test. If I now run all of this code, this will run through and generate a new data frame that contains all of the trades. And I can output the trades down here. I had 121 trade signals and I have 121 trades. Now I can visualize the balance by plotting out the results of these trades. I'm just going to paste in my code here for plotting this balance out. And if I run this cell, I can now see the account balance over those 121 trades. This looks really good and it shows that the strategy does produce profitable trade signals, which are better than random. The rest is just risk management. The stop loss can go at a swing low for a fixed stop, or it could be a trailing stop that aims to capture more of the trend. That's up to each individual's trading style. I also tested this on other timeframes, but it seems to work best on the one hour. The downside of this strategy is that not many trades are generated, but there are a few things that I could try. I could test out other candlestick patterns or just be a little bit less rigorous with the doji requirements. And I could test this on short signals as well, but this code gives a framework to be able to do that quickly. So I encourage you to tweak this, test some other variations and share your results in the comments. And if there is another strategy that you'd like me to test out, then drop that in the comments too. I'm always looking for new ideas to test.